The Brian Mudd Show is on News Radio 610 WIOD. Quentin Brogdon, legal analyst for us uh, so often, and an attorney for Crane, Brogdon, and, and Rogers, taking a look at the VAX mandate. Now, of course, Quentin, the, the big thing here is that we still don't have a rule. <laughs> I know as an attorney, it's really hard for you to, to provide hard legal analysis to something that does not yet exist. But I'm just curious at this point as to your thought regarding what we do know at this point. And specifically, Brian, good morning again. Specifically, you're talking about whether an employer can fire an employee for refusing to be vaccinated for COVID. See, si, senor. Well, probably the answer is yes, unless something within the state, you know, the governor's mandate in your state, uh, a law passed in the state in which some, one of your listeners lives, Florida or elsewhere, you know, a state law trumps it in some way and or a union contract uh, if you're a part of a union or a specific employment contract then probably you can be fired for refusing to be vaccinated unless you have a sincerely held religious belief that prevents it or you have a disability under the americans with disabilities act that would make you more susceptible Uh, many of your listeners are not going to want to hear that and i'm not taking a side one way or the other on it i'm just trying to give you my best understanding of the consensus of what the law is now quentin uh you you brought something that is really instructive and and that i wanted to address and that is state law in all of this so today in the state of florida there is a law banning proof of vaccination for service proof of vaccination for not for employment but for service and we've seen the the employers that have had vaccine mandates in our state they've been able to do so lawfully we've even had you know, local governments that have done this in which they have fired employees who did not comply. Uh, would the state of Florida, because there is discussion of a special session to be held to address this this conversation, would the state of Florida have to pass a law stating that employers cannot mandate a COVID-19 vaccine in order for there to be added legal arguments for those that work in our state that wouldn't want to comply with the vaccine mandate? Brian, this is the tip of the spear as far as what's, you know, being fought in state after state. It's governors versus the president. It's governors versus local authorities. It's governors versus school districts. And the the federal government has now waded in with two big feet and trying to, you know, with respect to the school districts and employers. So these things are being fought out state by state. To answer your question as best I can, it certainly would help employers in the uh, employees in the state of florida if there was a florida state law that tied the hands or restricted you know what employers could fire employees for when it comes to covid vaccinations it certainly would help no question about that yeah that is something that there i don't know how serious the consideration is at this point but it was floated by a few state reps at a minimum over the weekend that perhaps we should have a special session to take on this topic so that it would be in place by the time that you would have the rule that's produced by OSHA that by the Biden administration. Of course, our Attorney General in Florida, Ashley Moody, has already said she will legally challenge it to trying to take up the case for, for anybody in the state. One other question that's come up along these lines. You know, what about, you know, so President Biden mandated for federal uh, employees that get vaccinated. He put these rules in for uh, employers over 100 or he's ordered the you know OSHA to go ahead and do this. Would there be any implication about unemployment benefits for somebody who would be laid off as a result of a refusal to get a vaccine? Again, it would depend upon the state in which the employee lives, but generally in most states, there's a requirement to recover unemployment benefits that you lose your job through no fault of your own if you're the employee. So if you're laid off or you lose your job because of a reduction in force or downsizing or something like that, generally you can recover unemployment benefits. On the other hand, if you have refused to do something the employer asked you to do and you don't have good cause for that or you violated company policy or violated the law, in many states, most states, you're not going to be able to recover unemployment benefits. And so the question would be, if I'm an employee and I'm refusing to get vaccinated for COVID, would that be under my state's you know, rules for the administration of unemployment benefits, some kind of good cause. 
probably, if I've got a sincerely held religious belief, again, against vaccination or a disability under the Americans Disabilities Act, I'd have a good argument in, in most states, at least, that that was my good cause. And I should be able to, you know, whether I was fired or whether I quit, recover unemployment benefits. But again, it's every state administers their benefits in the own, their own way. The federal government was deeply involved with this uh, American Rescue Plan. It was adding $300 a week, even though the states were administering it. But now that has ended, and I'm not aware of any state that's continuing. It. So I think it's now just state money and state administration of those benefits state by state. Got it. Okay, well, that's a great explanation. And in, in terms of the rhetoric, right, so President Biden, when he mentioned this, I mean, he pretty much – said Ron DeSantis and, and Greg Abbott by name, right? Uh, you know, governors that are standing in the way, and he's going to move them out of the way. From a legal standpoint, what can he do unilaterally that would be in con- that would contrast with state policy uh, along these lines? Again, the tip of the spear, we, you know, we are a, a, a federal uh, go- government, and the states have their own powers, and there are certain powers the states have, and the federal government cannot take away from them and cannot infringe on. Likewise, though, there's a concept in the law called preemption, where the federal government can step in, at least in certain circumstances, and say, we're the feds, and we get to preempt, meaning do away with any conflicting local or state level law. And that's where the fight is going on. Exactly how much power does the federal government have? And the states are saying, you don't have this power because we have certain powers that you you can't touch. The federal government, on the other hand, is saying, oh, yes, we do. And as is so often the case, the federal government often imposes its will through withholding money, they're saying, or and or giving money. When they wanted the speed limit raised by the states, the federal government, they said, you don't have to, uh, or lowered rather to 55 back when, you don't have to lower your speed limit, but if you don't, you're going to lose federal highway funds. And same with the DWI limit, they lowered it from 0.10 to 0.08 nationwide, same kind of deal. So it's a combination of legal arguments plus money. Always Great information and appreciate the explanation as we are watching precedent be set all the time, I guess. And we'll see a lot more of that. Quentin Brogdon, Crane Brogdon Rogers. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Take care, Brian.